momentum and impulse. Let's start with momentum. What is it? Well, momentum is mass times velocity. That's it. Um, why would we want to define something as mass times velocity? Like, why would that be useful? Well, you'll see that next time. Um, but for now, just know that momentum is mass times velocity, and that ends up being a very useful quantity to use. Um, funny thing, the way that we represent momentum in an equation is with lowercase p. There are reasons why that is. Takes a while to explain. Um, let's not worry about it. <laughs> um, momentum is a vector. Uh, it gets its direction from velocity. Momentum and velocity always have the same direction. Um, the units of momentum can be found using the equation. So momentum's units have to equal the unit of mass times the unit of velocity. So momentum has units of kilogram meter per second. Um, now we can also write it a different way because let's take, take that kilogram meter per second and rewrite it. Uh, we can rewrite it as a kilogram meter per second squared multiplied by a second. And the reason why we'd want to do that is because that combination, kilogram meter per second, that's a Newton. So another possible unit for momentum is the Newton second. Newtons times seconds. Um, now if you look at the equation, you can see momentum is affected by both the mass and the velocity. Uh, both have an impact on what the momentum is. Uh, if you had a larger mass, you'd expect a larger momentum. If you had a larger velocity, you'd expect a larger momentum. Um, but you have to take both into account. So let's look at a very simple example. Let's look at a really fast ping pong ball and a slow bowling ball. Um, let's say we have a ping pong ball with a mass of 50 grams, 0.05 kilograms, moving at 1,000 meters per second to the east. And let's say we have a bowling ball with a mass of 8 kilograms and a velocity of 1 meter per second to the east. So bowling ball clearly has more mass. Ping pong ball here clearly has more velocity. Uh, but the momentum, you, you have to calculate it, and then you can compare it. Uh, so in this case, the momentum of the ping pong ball is 10 kilogram meters per second to the east. And the momentum of the bowling ball is 8 kilogram meters per second to the east. Um, but it's hard to have an intuition for which one is larger before you do the calculation. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, impulse. Um, what is impulse? Well, impulse is the change in the momentum. Simple as that. Um, we often use the variable capital J for impulse. If that seems strange, that's okay. That's weird. I get it. Um, just deal with it. Um, the impulse then, J, is equal to the change in P, change in the momentum. Uh, and I've represented change with delta. And if you remember way back, um, if you have the change in something, it's always equal to the final value minus the initial value. So the impulse is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Um, impulse is a vector. The direction we can find using a little bit of math often. Um, and we'll see examples of that in a moment. The unit of impulse is the exact same as the unit of momentum. The unit of impulse is either the kilogram meter per second or a newton second. Let's take a little example. Let's say we have an object moving with a momentum of five kilogram meters per second to the east. And then something happens, life happens, and then it has a momentum of three kilogram meters per second to the east later on. So the way that we would say that is that some impulse was applied to the object between those two times. And let's find the impulse that was applied to the object. So to do that, we take the final momentum and subtract the initial momentum. So, okay, final momentum is three kilogram meters per second. And let's make that positive. It had a um, momentum that was to the east, and east we often consider positive. So we got three kilogram meters per second, and then we subtract the initial momentum, five kilogram meters per second. Also east, also positive. So three minus five, then we get negative two kilogram meters per second. Well, let's see, what does that negative mean? Well, positive was east, so negative is west. 
In this case, the impulse is 2 kilogram meters per second west. And if you look at it, that is how the momentum changed. It went from being a large value to the east to a smaller value to the east. It decreased. That means it, it changed to be more to the west. Less to the east, more to the west. So that's what the impulse tells us. It tells us how the momentum changed. Uh, let's look at a different example. Let's say we have an object moving at 5 kilogram meters per second to the east. Then an impulse is applied, and later on it's moving at 5 kilogram meters per second to the west. Well, the impulse is the change in the momentum. And in this case, that is, let's see, negative 5 kilogram meters per second minus 5 kilogram meters per second. Right? That negative with the final value, it's negative because in the final value, it was to the west. And then subtract 5. Subtract the positive number, right? Because it was to the east. So we end up with a, an impulse of negative 10 kilogram meters per second, or 10 kilogram meters per second to the west. Okay. Another thing we can do with the impulse. Um, let's, let's use the second law. Let's go back to the second law. So net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay. Uh, we're going to assume that the mass of an object stays constant. So if we do that, let's see, um, the force is equal to the mass times the change in the velocity over the time. Right? That's the definition of acceleration that I just used. And I can expand that. That delta V, delta V is final, value, final velocity minus initial velocity. So force is equal to M, V final minus V initial over the time. And I can distribute the M, and I get that. And if you look, now I have mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. Huh, well mass times velocity, that, that's momentum. So I can rewrite this as final momentum minus initial momentum over the time. Hmm, final momentum minus initial momentum. That's the change in the momentum, and that's the impulse. So I end up with net force is equal to the impulse over the time. And if I rearrange that, we can say that the impulse on an object is always equal to the net force on the object times the amount of time that you apply the force. And that'll be useful. We will revisit that equation.